Ancient Hellenic colonism is different from enforced colonialism such as American or British colonialism. It was a trade-based colonism. In Illyria, Hellenic colonists installed near sea centers, in small numbers and in peace with the local inhabitants, because they were generally poor. For example, in Apollonia, the first group of colonists, according to the documents, was 200 people. In other words, they were not there to invade. And all the historical documents speak of good relations between the colonists and local populations in Illyria. During this colony period, the inhabitants of Apollonia Diracium and Oricum, the Illyrian cities, adopted political system of the Hellenes, the theater and the democratic system of the Hellenic polis. The main population was Illyrian, and most of the governors were Illyrian. But think of these ancient cities as international centers of trade. In a way, the ancient world was much more advanced than people imagine today. Around 171 BC, Apollonia and Duracium were incorporated into the Illyrian kingdom of King Gentius, and the Greek colonists were kicked out because Apollonia and Duracium had sided with Rome in the Illyrian-Roman War. Despite these events, ancient Hellenic colonism in Illyria was overall a positive experience and was not a conflict-based colonialism as, for example, the English colonialism. The Hellenes colonized in this way only three cities in Illyria. We know this because they left documents of inventory during this time. And the first of these inventories was done by Pseudo-Silax at the beginning of the 4th century, who documented the inventory of ports of the Mediterranean, and he differentiated between the Greek ports and those who were Illyrian. When he arrives at the Adriatic, Pseudo-Silax mentions Duracium Apollonia and Oricum as colonized by Greeks, and on the other hand he mentions the Bilentines, the Amantes as barbarians or non-Hellenic. Barbarian in the Hellenic meant someone who speaks Varvar, in other words incomprehensible, a foreigner. The same facts are confirmed by Stefan Byzantini or Stephanos of Byzantium, and he confirms those same three cities as being colonized by the Hellenes while he mentions Bilis as an Illyrian city. Also, Pliny in the first century mentions that the Bilinis and Amantes, who live near Nymphaeum, are non-Hellenic. The legends say that the city of Bilis was founded by Neoptolemy, the son of Achilles, the Pelasgian hero of the Trojan War. The theater of Bilis holds a unique architectural style not found in any cities of the Mediterranean. Bilis is founded in the 4th century, before it was called Clossi in the 5th century. At this time there were a constellation of Illyrian cities that were quite advanced. Clossi, Bilis, Curzeza, Dimari, Partha, modern Berat, Skodra, Albanopolis, Lysus, etc. So we had three Illyrian cities which allowed Greek colonies and adopted their political system then we have a large amount of native Illyrian cities in the Illyrian Federation without any colonists. The city of Putrint was never colonized. The legends say that the city was founded by refugees from Troy by the son of King Priam. In the 4th century, the Chaons established the golden age of the city. Putrint is never mentioned as a Hellenic colony by any ancient source, only as a Chaonian city. Then later we have the arrival of the Roman colonies after the Illyro-Roman Wars. Now let us go through the difference between the Epirotes and the Illyrians. They were a brotherly people who descended from Pelasgians. They both spoke similar dialects and their border was the river Shkumbin in Albania. This is reflected very clearly, as in Albania today the border between the dialects of Tosk and Geg is the Shkumbin river. Both speak Albanian but with different dialects. Illyria was a kingdom and its citizens were called Illyrians. Then we have the Epirot kingdom, which contained the tribes of Chaons, Thesprotians and Molossians. The Illyrians, Epirots, Macedonians, Thracians and Dacians were all descendants of the legendary race of the Pelasgians, the people who first set foot on the European continent. Pseudo-Silax, when he makes his sea voyage, writes that the Amantes and Bilinese were Illyrians. 
then comes Caonia, after that Thesprotia, then Ambrasia, then after that starts Hellas. So he places the border between Hellenes and non-Hellenes in the Gulf of Arta, the same place where traditionally the Albanian Cham tribe have lived before they got massacred and ethnically cleansed by the Andartes soldiers of the modern Greek state in 1914 and again in 1944 after World War II.